So I mentioned at the end of my last video that I wanted to do something more lighthearted since I spent the last two videos essentially doom blogging about terrible corporate choices. And while I do enjoy examining things like that, it can get a little exhausting. And so I was racking my brain trying to think of what to make a video on. And like a voice above heard me, I was presented with something wonderful. The new trailer for the next season of the Harley Quinn show. And because I haven't had a chance to talk about any comic related shows or comics in general really, I figured I'd take a break, double down, and also talk about the Jurassic League comic run currently happening, and the benefit the two both have on DC Media. So let's talk about them. Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Void Theater. As always, I'm your host Alexander, and yeah, today we're going to be talking about Harley Quinn and the Jurassic League, two pieces of DC Media that I honestly think are some of the best that the company has produced in a long time. Of course, when I say that, I also realize that for DC that is an extremely low bar, but I do think it's true. These two are some of the best that DC has to offer in terms of entertainment. But why is that? Well, that's what I'm here to figure out. So let's discuss the positives the two have, what they do right compared to other shows and comics, and what that might mean for DC's future in entertainment. So without further ado, let's put these two on stage and see how they work. All right, so we'll start with the shorter one and talk about the Jurassic League. And I'm gonna be fully honest here, I just really need an excuse to talk about the Justice League as dinosaurs. But I wanna make one thing very clear. This is one of DC's best comics right now that isn't tied to a major story. It's dumb, it's childish, and it's stupid. And it's everything I've ever wanted since I got into comics. Look, I'm not asking for every comic to be in the same vein as the MCU. Honestly, I think most people are burned out by that style of storytelling. But I will say it's refreshing to see a comic that isn't directly tied to the idea of being dramatic. It's a breath of fresh air coming from the company whose movies I could only describe as being what would happen if someone just yelled the word darker at a screenwriter. But I will say, when I was reading the Jurassic League, it made me notice two things. The first was that there should be a primal graphic novel and these guys should be in charge of it. But the second was how it reminds me of the old DCAU shows I used to air. Shows like Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, and the original Justice League. All those shows had the perfect blend of comedic timing mixed with well-written and, at the time, dramatic stories. And Jurassic League manages to recapture that feeling in the two issues that have come out so far. The core premise is insanely silly and the story is so far basic, but that doesn't matter because it's fun. Everything about it is just plain fun. Even the little details like matching the superheroes to the correct dinosaurs based on their personality. I love that Batman is a breed of T-Rex because of course he is. His entire thing is scaring people. Wonder Woman being a Triceratops makes perfect sense when you consider the fact that a Triceratops is a rather peaceful dinosaur that could also gore you if it wanted. Just like how Wonder Woman advocates for peace but would also snap a villain's neck to get it. Even the idea of Joker being the acid spitting dinosaur from Jurassic Park and Robin being a baby caveman feels like perfect ideas for how to include them. The point I'm getting at is that Jurassic League found that sweet spot between overly campy and overly serious that just makes for a good read. Just like how Batman the Animated Series had emotionally damaging episodes like Heart of Ice mixed in with the odd and crazy episode like Joker's Favor. Again, I'm not asking for every single DC project to be more like the MCU or that I want every comic to be brightly colored and vibrant. Honestly, part of the reason I like DC so much is because they tend to offer more grounded reality in their comics while still keeping the insanity that comics can bring. But I will say that as much as I love comic arcs like Death of the Family, Endgame, and Super Heavy, there is something about a good old-fashioned goofy what-if story that just feels right. Honestly, if you haven't read Jurassic League yet, then please, go check it out. It's well worth the read. But moving on, let's talk about Harley Quinn, the hit DC show that is currently about to release its third season, and let's be honest, is probably getting ready for its fourth. Now, I believe that there needs to be a certain level of honesty here as well. I say that because when the first reveal trailer for Harley Quinn dropped, I wasn't exactly too thrilled at the idea of the show. And depending on how many people are watching this and what they do in their spare time, it's a good chance some of you right now weren't either. But for the people who don't read comics, let me give a brief history on Harley Quinn. So skipping over a bit of the obvious stuff involving the animated series where she got her start, Harley Quinn has been a bit of a mixed bag in terms of media. She's had one really good film, one semi-okay film, and a few we don't talk about. Outside of that, she's had a few comic runs, both good and bad, and has kind of been shoved into every form of media DC could fit her into. Just throwing this out here, controversial as it may be, it makes no sense that she got into multiverses before any other major DC villain. But that's kind of the point with Quinn. She's become DC's Deadpool. She's there to keep things semi-lighthearted, comedic, and jovial. And that works when you're a sporadic appearance character. But how do you make that work when you suddenly have to lead a full-blown show? Well, you could, and this is just entirely hypothetical, just an idea off the top of my little ghost head, but you could fill the cast with some talented actors, do a bunch of meta commentary on the entire DC universe and its characters, and just not take it too seriously while also having a pretty solid plotline going with relatable characters and pretty much creating a perfect satire of the superhero genre. You know, something like that. 
And really, that's what makes Harley Quinn such a good show. It works as an almost perfect level of satire of DC Comics. It easily avoids the danger zone that Teen Titans Go fell into and avoids the issue of making all its characters feel out of character. Batman is still Batman, he just shows more of a humane side. The Joker is still the Joker, but now they gave him this weird family angle to work off. Actually, the only two characters you could argue are out of character are James Gordon and Bane. And to play devil's advocate for a minute, the whole joke with Jim Gordon was to show what a police commissioner would look like if they worked in Gotham for years on end. Even then, the show goes out of its way to show that Gordon still maintains the comic accurate desire to protect the city. They just added the insanity on top as a punchline. As for Bane, you could make the argument that they reduced him to a comedic relief grunt, but considering his more recent runs in the comics, I'd say DC was already ahead of them in that department. But even then, like Gordon, they do show that Bane is still violent and insanely intelligent. Watching him smash Batman's legs was insanely brutal, but seeing him rage out and go threaten Two-Face only to calm down and apologize for knocking over a chair was just as good. And it's this type of humor that puts Harley Quinn into the same quality as Archer and Venture Bros instead of Teen Titans Go. It has a deep understanding of what the character is supposed to be parodying, and it uses that to the fullest to make the show better without taking them so far to character you barely recognize them. It works in the same way Archer does, where you realize that the concept of James Bond sounds cool in theory, but would be an absolute monster in real life. So they just take that and apply it to the whole cast. Or how Venture Bros takes the concept of the kid adventurer is going on all these dangerous expeditions and takes to the thought that the kid doing that stuff probably wouldn't be the most well-adjusted adult. And Harley takes the idea that most of the DC superhumans would probably be doing other things besides committing crimes or stopping them. It shows them living their lives and having more human interactions with each other. Honestly, this show feels like what would happen if you put all the DC characters in the office. And it's great for that because that's how Harley acts naturally, but it also provides a new take on the more serious characters we normally see. But that brings us back to DC and why I think things like the Harley Quinn show and the Jurassic League are so important for the company. And it's because they serve as a necessary reminder to remember to loosen up a bit with certain heroes. And the company also desperately needs to remember to have more fun with things like their movies. Again, I'm not asking for any MCU style movie where there's non-stop jokes 24-7, but I am asking if it wouldn't be too much trouble for the editor to just turn the brightness up. Not every single movie needs to be shot like it was in some dimly lit room, and not every single character needs an existential crisis about whether or not what they're doing is wrong. Sometimes a hero can just be a hero. Superman doesn't need to continuously question what if he's a real hero. He's Superman. He should be there to remind us that heroes can come from anywhere and should always be trying to make the world a better place just by being there. But when you start trying to make him dark and gritty, you start fighting against everything he stands for. I mean, there was a literal movie that details this exact issue of trying to make Superman edgy. It's not a hard lesson to learn, and yet DC never seemed to understand it. But setting aside all the joking and the whining, I really think what makes Harley Quinn and the Jurassic League so great is their simplicity. Both of them have a basic concept, but they know what they want to do with it, and in my opinion, it makes a much better product because you can feel that much more attention was put into it. Again, that doesn't mean that long, overarching stories are bad. I personally love comic runs like Death of the Family, The Court of Owls, Super Heavy, Zero Year, and Endgame, but I also realize that a lot of people don't have time to commit to reading comics like that. But with stuff like The Jurassic League and The Harley Quinn Show, it can be an easier and more accessible way to get someone into comics. Lord knows the industry needs all the help it can get right now. But with that, we come to the current call of the episode of The Void Theater. I know this one was a little shorter than the other stuff I put out recently, but I wanted to get a quick video out before all the new seasons of shows kick off. So look forward to reviews on Primal Season 2 and of course, Harley Quinn Season 3. I also have some longer videos coming out soon regarding independent animation on the internet and adult themed animation as well as the Return of the Character Study series. So keep an eye out for that as well. But as always, with the current closing, I'll leave you with some questions. What do you think of the Jurassic League and the Harley Quinn show? And do you think DC should incorporate a more lighthearted touch in their movies? Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think, and while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Until next time, I've been your host Alexander, and I hope to see you back in my theater.